Hi there, this is Scott Duffy from softwarearchitect.ca. In this video, I'm gonna address something a little complicated. It's on the term REST and RESTful services. What is REST and what do you use it for? So REST is an acronym, R-E-S-T. It stands for Representational State Transfer. As the name implies, it has to do with client and server relationship and how state is stored. Now, early days of web development, it became needed that the server side of a web application needed to remember certain details about the, the user that's using it. I'll give you an example. If you're going to write an application in classic ASP, nobody does that anymore, and somebody logs in and you want to store their username and a couple of other pieces of information you need about them, you could store their username in a session variable on the server. What would happen is that the server would then reserve a little bit of memory for that user, and that's what it's called a session. And so the more users you get, the more little bits of memory would get taken up. And if you had an application that needed to serve thousands of people at the same time, the memory would quickly be full and your server application would come to a halt and you had very real performance uh, problems when, when, and scaling problems when you had an application that used server-side memory to store. Now, the advancement in that became storing this state in a database. ASP.NET has such a thing called a session server, a session state, and you could then just store a small token, and that would be passed between the client and server, and then the server would be able to go look up in a database the information it needed about that user using that token. The further advancement of this is this concept of REST. The concept of REST is that the client passes to the server everything that the server needs to perform the action, and then the server does it, returns to the client with the action complete, and that's it. It's a, it's a process that is complete. You make a request, the request gets fulfilled, done. I do not need to remember you. I do not have anything sitting on the server that tells me um, that I have to remember the following five facts. If you need five facts, those get passed. Now there are other concepts uh, in REST. So for instance, RESTful service often make use of the HTTP uh, specification to a fuller extent. This is no surprise because the person who came up with the idea for RESTful service is also the same person that uh, defined the HTTP specification. So instead of just getting information or posting information, a RESTful service often does put operations, delete operations. There are other uh, post types beyond get and post that, that HTTP recommends. And so RESTful services implement those. The third thing that you find in common with a lot of RESTful services are that there is a URL structure. And oftentimes you'll end up with action slash ID slash parameter slash, like the URL of the request contains information that the server needs. And so instead of a URL representing a directory structure and a specific file in a specific folder, in a RESTful service, oftentimes you get to a point where the rest of the URL represents data and it's oftentimes an ID, uh, etc. And finally, a RESTful service uh, uses typical XML web services notation. And so that could be returning XML output or JSON output. You're not gonna see RESTful services returning HTML that just gets dumped to the, to the client. There's some interpretation required. So those are the four basic um, properties of a RESTful service. And so hopefully that made sense. A RESTful service, the fundamental thing is it does not maintain the state on the server that the client passes everything that it needs as part of the URL structure or as in a header. If there's an authentication token or other that needs to be passed, it is part of a HTTP header. It uses the full range of HTTP properties and then it uses XML or JSON to return back to the user, uh, back to the client to be further processed. So that's my attempt at explaining the RESTful service. If that wasn't clear or you have any questions about REST or XML web services, leave them in the comments. This is Scott from softwarearchitect.ca and talk to you soon. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for watching. Click the thumbs up button if you like this video. There's the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this as I create them. On the right is another video about software architecture that you might enjoy. On the left, I actually have a course on architecture. I want you to check it out. Up above is my website. If you want to go there, read some blog articles, things like that. And finally, if you have any questions about software enterprise architecture, just leave them in the comments on the YouTube channel and I'd be happy to talk to you there. So thanks again and I hope to see you again.